Hey, welcome back to the show. Coffee and cream on Hail Varsity Radio, powered by Currency. DB, Andrew Rogers, ESPN 590 here in Omaha. We're live on Twitter, live on YouTube. You can catch us via StreamYard. Sign in, leave us a comment, or give us a call, late at 868-4876. We take a moment now uh, to talk to Brady Oldman, who joins us every Monday via StreamYard. And he's in a new location. Trust me, I'm observant. I know. I know. That's not his normal It's, all, it's always something. Well, you know, I just moved from the bedroom slash office into the living room slash office. Ah. Trickster you. It looks like you just moved from the pillow to the com- computer, too. No, I get, the dog wanted an extra long walk this morning, so ah, I got pl- I got plenty of sunlight. I just uh, – <laughs> it, it, t- it takes a little bit for me to get moving. I blame it on the slow heart rate. Hey, Bill, what kind of dog do you have? He's a little corgi. Oh, Pick him up. A little corgi. You want me to pick up, bud? Oh, no, he Yeah, did. like every dog did. <laughs> like, hey, come here, Buddha. Yeah. Look at oh, him. Oh, little cutie pie. Uh, what's his name? It's Archie. Archie. I, I know At, another dog named na- Archie. Named after? Uh, named him after a song by a uh, Canadian rock band. Uh, we, you and I got to have a talk about Canadians. Not about the next yeah, Texas at, quarterback? At, at some point. No. No. <laughs> give, give, Ar- give Arch a year to – Exactly. <laughs> give Arch a year to sit behind Ewers and get Ewers drafted. Then Sark may buy himself some time. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, let me ask you something. This is, Andrew and I were talking about Minnesota and, and kind of the trepidation in this opener, right, where – you know, Minnesota is a, is a healthy fave and, and not whether they should or shouldn't be, but how imp- who's the game more important for, in your opinion, as we're, what, 60 days away from kick? Um, I, th- I think the easy answer is Nebraska just because of the, the new staff, Matt Rule. I mean, I guess it's, it's low stakes for Nebraska yeah. because it, it, like it he is. Gets a, he gets a mulligan. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 game one. You can definitely excuse a lot of things on that. But I, I definitely think that it's not like it's low stakes for Minnesota either. I mean, they had been a, a, rare, a pretty consistent coaching staff there, but just in the last coaching carousel, uh, some assistants fled. Um, I know a couple of them went over to Illinois uh, with Ryan Waters, ta- or sorry, not with, um, with Illinois, but um, over at Purdue where Ryan Waters, former Illinois D.C., is now taking over. I think he got a couple of assistants over there. So PJ's had to move and shuffle his coaching staff a little bit more than in previous years. So I think there's a little bit more curious eye to see who he gets in and if they're the right people to fit at Minnesota. Because I think, especially now with um, with Luke Fickle moving over to Wisconsin, there fe- there seems like there might be a little bit more pressure um, on PJ to, to send Minnesota up to that next echelon in the Big Ten. And obviously, there's certainly pressure on Matt Rule in Nebraska to get going. But year one, game one for Nebraska, the, the pressure's not there for Matt Rule like it is for PJ. But it's it's not like it's a low stakes for really either one of them. Do you get the sense that, uh, not to harp on the spread, I'm just surprised that the assumption is that Minnesota is officially mm-hmm. plug and play. They've got a lot to fix by the time they put toe to leather. Well, and you, t- you you mentioned Mo Ibrahim gone. Like, I mean, he had been the bell cow. I mean, for for a program that just loved to to mash and grind. And then, of course, the um, Calianna McMalice. I think I'm, I'm sure I'm pronouncing that name improperly. Yeah, the the other Greek freak. Um, yeah. he, <laughs> <laughs> he, I mean, Sorry, we he, all mispronounce that guy's uh, name. Yeah. The Greek freak. I, I kind of like, like that. We, I'm just going. <laughs> Here on that. I mean, well, he played well against Nebraska. You know, he filled in great for Tanner Morgan, but I'm curious to see what he does in a full time starting capacity and what he does again with the new coaching staff. It's it's not plug and play, really. They've got to find the guys to get it done. And Minnesota's gotten some decent recruiting victories on the trail, but I don't I don't know. I'm just very I'm very curious. I'm indecisive uh, on what they've done so far, so I'm really curious to see how it plays out on the field. They just have a lot to put together. To, to both of your guys' points. Especially said, defensively. Defensively. That's that's yeah. where it really grabs my attention, too, because you you get the big names, right? You read a bunch of reports on how they get Crooms, they get Tyler as 
both have been said. You get returners. Um, you, you have a new quarterback. Like these are all names that are recognizable. But then you look on the defensive side of the ball and you're like, well, they had some guys that went to the draft this year that were pretty dang good. And now they have to try and replace them. It, is it as easy to say, B.O., that, you know, you, you put these guys in the mix and they just do it? Or if you're another team, are you like, hey, this is where we take advantage, right? We, we, we find their weaknesses and we go. Well, it certainly helps to have good players and to have players who are familiar with that environment and familiar with that stage to perform. But, you know, in college football anymore, and it's always been this way, but now especially, it's a, it's an arms race. It's a what's going to get you to that next level? What's going to help you leapfrog people and stay above? And for long stretches, that's been coaching. It just happens, you know, now the, the coaching cycle, everything changes a lot more frequently in coaches. Uh, if you have a full-time, like, 10-person staff, those don't really stay those same 10 people at one school for very long anymore just by, by virtue of the carousel. So then you have each coach trying to bring their own little bit to get their guys over the hump. But then you also have those, you know, those first timers or those guys new to the system that are trying to get used to their coworkers. They're trying to get used to the program themselves. They're getting used to the players. So there's an adjustment period there that I think isn't necessarily conductive to that team making the next leap or those, those players making the next leap. And then you, you think about, especially, Minnesota defensively, a game one like against Nebraska per se, there's Nebraska has a lot of explosive elements, a lot of explosive receivers, and a lot of battering ramp running backs. But logistically, what Nebraska's offense is going to do isn't going to be the the X's and O's light you up kind of way. They were going to be a little bit more um, thoughtful and more powerful, a little bit more straightforward than really try to outdial you up X's and O's wise, just in terms of like slinging the ball around and getting super creative about it. And I wonder if, you know, that's that's going to be one thing that as people start trying to and coaches start trying to to win the X's and O's battles on the board, they might, you know, lose the forest through the trees a little bit and see when you can run straight down for five, six yards a pop. That's that's going to be a pretty surefire way to win ball games instead of, you know, um, doing the the more seven on seven style things that that you're seeing um, mm-hmm. in the air raid proliferation of college football. All right, so I don't want to make – I don't want to – I'm just getting uh, – I'm, I'm making sure I heard what I thought. You think Nebraska is explosive potentially in the wide receiver category. Who does that start with? Because um, that, that's the part that I actually worry about early on in this season is getting explosive plays in the passing game. Well, you think about like Xavier Betts, if, if he gets and stays involved, I mean, clear, clearly talented enough to be explosive. For all they, intents and purposes, we'll trot out in that starting lineup in, in at Minnesota. Yeah, yeah. Um, Billy Kemp could be. I, I think he probably Addison is a little bit ben. more. Yeah, a little bit more reliable guy. You know what you're getting. He's got four solid years, five solid years of production behind him. Uh, you can trust him. Marcus Washington, don't be – don't don't be – of surprised if he just pops off the page this year. Oh, he's my, I mean, he's my favorite, so I would. Be. And 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 then you've got. I know. Um, I think Satterfield and Rule have both said that they need some of those younger guys to step up. So you've got explosive guys, Malachi Coleman, Jaden Dot, Jalen Lloyd, guys who can just physically are capable to do things that Nebraska just historically has not had at that position. To where if they get the ball in those hands they're able to make those explosive plays. I just think, I don't know if necessarily you want to bank on that right away year one, especially with those freshmen, but there's there's the potential and it's there in that receiver room. We're talking to Brady Oltman's Nebraska football and recruiting for Hale Varsity at Brady Oltman's on Twitter. I want to take a moment and look at that recruiting side that, that you lean into. And as we know, Nebraska landed 16 commits at one point in just 22 days in the month of June. But right now it almost feels like things are starting to slow down, even though recruiting, as we know, never stops. It's July. Um, and and it, I wanted to ask that. Is it just because it's July? Um, is it going to build up more in fall camp, in season? And who do you think is going to be next in the fold, B.O.? Yeah, it's the July dead period. So, you know, you've got some kids like um, Preston uh, Preston Talma from Hawaii is scheduled to make his announcement, I think, next week. 
You've got a couple of other guys that Nebraska's in the fold for that should be making their announcements within the next week or so. Uh, no word exactly on a date for Grant Bricks. Uh, I know there's a possibility he might take his decision into the, the season. There are a couple of other guys that might take their decisions into the season. So it's it's just one of those dead period times where coaches are taking their vacations, taking their time off to, to step away, to have times with their family, and then kind of regroup and work on like um, in-house recruiting during the season. Uh, I wonder if they're going to try to do some, if Nebraska's coaches will try to do something similar to the spring where they have like open doors for fall camp and fall practices where if, uh, you know, should it align with the recruiting calendar? I haven't exactly looked at the open dates and whatnot, but um, if they can get people in to like look at camps and practices again for the open door policy of like, hey, here's how we do things. No secrets, no, you know, we're not hiding anything come take a look. And if this is something that doesn't fit what you want, no shame at you. But if you can get behind this and you can plan this, then you know, right away, like you've seen how the sausage is made. And if you're all right with it, then, you know, you kind of clear that next hurdle with, with them. So it's, it's kind of that thing. It's downtime now. And then just prepare for the whole, the next stage of the blitz and what's coming next. Hey, Brady, real quick, slot me one through four with Illinois, Iowa, Wisconsin, and Minnesota. Oh man, um, I still think Illinois up there, okay. and then probably, probably Miss Wisconsin, Nebraska, Minnesota. Mm. I think we get a lot of different answers. That's how wide open it is. Mm. Good yeah. stuff, Bo Brady Oltmans. We appreciate you, man. All right, good to see you guys. Hey, Phil Rogers, up next.